But if I was buying a tractor today, it would be this one right here. This is the loader mount, and it goes all the way back to under the axles. If I'm ready to buy one today this size, why would I go with Kubota? Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I just got to the Tulsa Farm Show. I'm going to walk around the show, show you anything that I think is cool or interesting. Probably focus a lot on tractors today. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start with the John Deere because I haven't shown much love to John Deere lately, and you guys know I'm a big fan, so let's get it started. So I was really hoping that they'd have a 4075 or 4066 cab tractor here that I could sit in and compare to some of the 50 to 70 horsepower cab tractors I've been looking at lately. They don't have anything like that, but this 3025D is pretty interesting to me because... The knock everyone has on John Deere is that they're too expensive. Well, depends on what you're looking at. This is a competitor in price to some of the other brands that I may talk about more often. So if your talking point about John Deere is that they're all overpriced, you're looking at the wrong models. This machine is similar to the 3025E, except that it's a D model, which means it's a gear-driven transmission. And this machine is the same length as mine, has a lot bigger tires. This machine right here is very simple. No regen, no def obviously, gear drive transmission, under $20,000, $11,000 less than mine if you're looking for simplicity. Now if you're looking for the extra features, they've got that, it's called an R model. If you want a basic tractor, this is what's going to compete with those off brands, but you still get the John Deere customer service and dealer network and all of that. So if you look at these two machines, this is the tractor I have, 2038R. They look about the same from a distance, right? Huge price savings over here. And this doesn't even look like the same tractor I have, obviously without the cab, but it's also got some other differences like turf tires, which give it a bigger wheel and tire. This would be like a hybrid tire. It's not exactly a turf tire. So if money was no object, I would sell my tractor and my skid steer today, and I would get a little bit bigger mini excavator and a much bigger tractor but those things are a little harder to pull off in real life. For now, I guess we're just looking, but the 30G is uh, going for 49 here at the show. I think I would probably want a 40 or a 50G, honestly. I don't know the mini excavator market well enough to comment on price. When I bought my skid steer, it came down to three brands that I had a real interest in. Cat, Deer, and JCB. Well, the JCB dealer was too far away, I decided. There's a good cat dealer nearby. I actually ended up going with John Deere because I knew the names of everyone at the dealership. And when the two machines seemed comparable to, to me, that ended up making the difference. So I was just asking the guys here, you know, why I should get a cat. And they pointed out a lot of design features little things about comfort and convenience that may not be maybe i can't even repeat that well but i did look at all the serviceability everything is very easy access there's nothing you ever have to lift the cab up for all the grease zerks are easily accessed all your daily maintenance stuff the air filter one thing he pointed out is they've got a dual rear and dual front track and basically if you roll your track off to the outside, it's going to keep running without tearing anything up until you can get it fixed and makes it a little bit easier to get back on. He also pointed out that if you need to get behind this for anything, this entire track and carriage system slides out so you can access behind it. This is a 259D, which fits the same requirements I had for the skid steer. I wanted to be able to haul it without a CDL and I didn't want to have def fluid. This is that same class of 75 horsepower, 9,500 pound machine. Like I said before, everything's very easy to access for maintenance, like your air filter and your coolant. This is a self-priming fuel filter. It used to be that if you ran a piece of a diesel engine out of fuel, you might have a problem. This system's not like that. If you take the fuel filters off, you run it out of fuel, anything like that, automatically will self-prime. One major feature that I wish mine had that this does is auto level on the way up and down. I don't understand why all machines don't have that in a skid steer. 
my John Deere auto levels up, but on the way down, it doesn't. And because my tractor auto levels up and down, it throws me off when I'm working with a pallet and I'm not used to it. I really like that auto level both directions. And strangely enough, the mini skid steer is the same way. Auto level up, not on the way down. The thing you know about CAT is the big construction companies are running them a lot. And that has to mean something. So guys, I've been shopping for a new tractor for a year and a half. Half of you are probably just sick of hearing me talk about shopping for a tractor and want to tell me to just do it. But if I was buying a tractor today, it would be this one right here. This is uh, the Yanmar. Let me get make sure I don't mess up. YT347. This is going to be comparable to like a John Deere 4044 or 4052. And this is not an economy tractor. This is a premium tractor from a premium tractor manufacturer that's been in business for over 100 years. I don't have any affiliation with them of any kind, but they build their entire machine in-house. They design everything in-house. And they're not just remaking the same thing you've seen before. I'm going to see if I can get some of the footage last year where I had a service tech explain how their transmission works. See if I can lay some of that in right here. You know, it is technically a hydrostat, uh, but the transmission we have in here, we refer to it as an IHMT uh, or an intelligent hydromechanical transmission. So there's a lot more functionality on this tractor to where you can actually go in and you can set your max speed or your max horsepower. And, and you can actually switch in between those modes uh, depending what gear you're in. So if you're cutting one row, and you need to be going slow at a higher RPM. Uh, you come to the end of, end of the row, you need to turn around, you can quickly bump your speed up, turn it around, set back down, hit your button again, it'll change your settings back to where it was. It's almost kind of like a, like a cruise control, uh, basically. But what you can do is you can actually run the PTO in the rear at, at 540 when the engine's high. Uh, so- That's, I have so, not heard of that, at least not on a compact. Yeah, so so you can, and all our YT3 series tractors are set up with that style transmission. Uh, but what that does is that lets you fine tune the tractor to where you get better fuel efficiency out of it. And, and you can actually get it in that torque curve uh, so that you're running it uh, at, at peak performance, at peak fuel efficiency, and also uh, keeps you from running into regen problems from not loading your tractor properly and getting hot to be able to do it with any of the regen necessary. I don't have any time running one of these. I'm just impressed by them. And it's a weird deal. I don't know why we don't see more Yanmar on YouTube or hear them talked about more. So every time I go to the Yanmar booth, I focus on that 347 because it's the one I would want. But by far the most sold tractors in the compact market are these 25 horse. This is a frame size, mid frame 25 horse, like a Deer 2025. It's got 1,300 pounds of lift on the front end loader, but over 2,000 pounds of lift on the back. So you can carry a square bale with this little guy. It's not a complicated or unique transmission like we were talking about on the other tractor. Just a regular hydrostat, quick attach loader. One thing that's interesting on these smaller Yanmars, it's not a skid steer quick attach it's not their own proprietary quick attach it's called the european quick attach and there are companies that make attachments for it but it's a little bit of a unique system on it one of the things that holds yanmar back is i don't know that they have a dealer network everywhere but in my area jensen tractor offers yanmar and new holland let's look at some of these new hollands too Hopefully I don't sound like I'm trying to come off as an expert because anyone who watches can tell I'm not an expert, but I do spend a lot of time looking at tractors, talking about tractors. It's just a hobby of mine. I really like equipment. And as I talk to these dealers, I find some things very interesting. For instance, New Holland, that is a major, well-known, respected brand for large ag equipment. New Holland skid steers, New Holland ag tractors, great reputation but for whatever reason you never really hear much about the new holland compacts it feels like some of these companies don't really put the energy into marketing or promoting these 
I honestly think that New Holland should be working with some uh, YouTubers. So this tractor right here is a Workmaster 25. Unlike the Yanmar I was just looking at, this is definitely a large frame 25 horse. A lot of people want the 25 horse to avoid those regen systems. And this is the large frame 25 horse is popular because of that. So this machine is here to compete with like a Deer 3025E or a 3025D. You can get this for $20,000. It's gonna lift 1,800 pounds, which covers most of the things us compact tractor guys need to do avoids having that regen. The person this tractor is not for is someone who does intensive PTO work. That's when you need that higher horsepower. But I don't feel like you need that horsepower to pull a box blade or pull a plow or do loader work. I dug a ditch with a Deer 325E and it did just as well as my 38 horse 2 series for a lot less money. I said it earlier, but my machine is perfect for a group of people who want a certain level of premium features and versatility. But if you just want to get the maximum amount of basic work done, you can save a lot of money on something like this. All right, so we got a backhoe on this one. First thing I want to see, I don't think anyone still makes a tractor backhoe that doesn't have a subframe that goes back under it. Just asking for, di for disaster to mount a backhoe on the three-point. And it's designed the way you would want it to be. That backhoe frame runs all the way up under the machine. I think all these brands make a good tractor. And you'll notice that I hardly ever say anything negative. So I'm just a positive person in the way I think about things. And I've tried to focus on the positive. So I think all the brands make a great tractor. It's just a matter of the dealer near you, probably. Right. You know, a lot of times when I'm at these shows, it's like pulling teeth, getting someone who wants to talk to me. And... This is a product where I actually found someone who wants to tell me about it. So can you tell us what the company is and what they, what you guys specialize in? Badass workbench. We build heavy duty workbenches. Uh, we're unique swivel drawer design, rated for 450 pounds. He says so, 450 pounds. Well, I'm like I, 275. Let's I'm see. just a little shy of that. Not too bad. And they swivel the same with the weight or without the weight in them. And then each one has a grease dirt on it. A one inch shaft and a grease dirt right there. So is the most common customer for this uh, welding or just any kind of shops, cars, pretty much anybody that's working on anything. Well, so I'm inside doing projects, you know, all the time. I've got a heated and cooled shop, but I'm afraid one of these is probably out of my price range. So what are we looking at for like, this is probably the big one, What like a mid-size. Yeah, 11600 on this one. You can get a weld table with a half-inch top for $3,050. Casters, 3 by 6 really handy size. Let's take a look at one of those. All right, so for someone like me in my shop, honestly, I don't know if I need that. It'd be nice, but I'd really like to have this one. I can bring it out into the middle of the room when I'm using it and then put it against the wall when I'm not. So that side's got locking swivel casters. Like what kind of a heat rating does this have? Like 4,000 pounds. It's not, not a problem. <laughs> and um, you said how thick is the table? Half inch top. For 3,600, you can get a four by eight perfectly flat welding table with a vise on it. Yep. If someone is watching this and they think, man, I'd like to have one of those badass tables, where would they go to get it? www.badassworkbench.com. Yeah. So I've had people asking me, because uh, I don't curse, if uh, that's ever going to change. Well, I guess I just did. <laughs> so someone can order this and have it shipped? Yep. You can order it online. We LTL freight them all over the country and out of the country even. Oh, I need one of these. I was walking around for about 30 seconds and two guys recognized me and they have their own YouTube channel. So I'm going to let you guys tell them the name of your channel, where the best place to find you is. I'm Eric Motter. I got the 4M Ranch YouTube channel. I got uh, TikTok as well at uh, DMOT underscore 4M Ranch. I'm Trent Harris with Blue Collar Contractors. We're on TikTok at BC Contractors and YouTube at BC Contractors as well. So. They're local to me and they have machines, so I got to get together with them later. 
I want to run everybody's machine. Hopefully you guys can hear me. There's a live performance of some Christmas music happening behind me. But this Solus tractor is almost identical to the Summit tractor that you guys have seen me review before. Also that mid mid frame size of 25 horse tractor. But this is made by ITL, which is an Indian company, but they're fifth in the world in tractor sales. Massive company, been making tractors for a very long time. They're just new to the US market and they've launched under two different names right now, Solus and Summit. The difference with the Summit tractor is it's going to have a self-leveling loader and the pre-filled tires and a rear remote, and which actually I think this one has a rear remote, but what they've done is added a few features and just increase the price a little bit. So you don't have to go through that extra hassle of loading the tires and, you know, a self-leveling loader to me is a really valuable. I would easily spend a couple thousand dollars on a self-leveling loader. So it's a nice add on, but Solus is the parent company that makes that tractor. And this one is going to feel exactly like it. I've just made circles with this in a dealer's lot before is the only time I've used it, but it, it feels exactly like that machine. Now, Solus also has this same thing in a gear drive tractor, and they're just now releasing larger tractors into the market, a 57 and a 75 horse, I believe. So what you're really getting with these Solus tractors is a very simple but capable machine at a really low price point. I believe you can get this machine as equipped right here for under $16,000. And if you wanna spend even less than that, you can get it in a gear drive version. And that's a 25 horse, but it's not a subcompact. This is a mid-frame 25 horse. So I normally walk right by the Deutsch tractors because I think of them as just an ag tractor. And they've got a great reputation as an ag tractor, but it turns out They've got a 65 horse tractor here that you can get for $40,000. Now, this is a little bigger than any of the tractors I've been looking at. It's almost closer to like a five series in the John Deere, but in that price range, it's worth taking a look at. So is this tractor a hydrostat or gear drive or is it an option? This one's gear drive, but the bigger ones you can get them in hydrostatic. So I did some research on this tractor after I left the show and it is brand new to the market this year and it's really an interesting model you see it here without the loader just for space but this comes with a loader that is already plumbed with third function and it comes standard with a four-in-one bucket it also has a self-leveling loader it's built in a very simple manner with all steel body parts everything about this machine seems overbuilt but $40,000 makes it seem to be way underpriced for what you're getting here. That's just my initial impression. One of my viewers very astutely pointed out the other day that the uh, Quantum Hut build was maybe the best thing I've ever done. And it was accurate. So when I first ordered it and it was delivered and I had to make that second payment on it, I kind of thought, man, I've messed up. I can't really afford this building and maybe I shouldn't have got it. Worried how useful it's going to be without the ends closed in, but not sure I wanted to close them in. And man, I wouldn't be where I'm at if I hadn't done that Quonset Hut build. It's phenomenal to be able to go up there and mill lumber inside that in the weather, some nice lighting. <laughs> it extends my usable work day and a fully enclosed building wouldn't really do that the same way. Even though you can lift the doors on it, it's nice. It's really nice. It's been great for videos too. So I'm walking along here and I see a mini excavator, which I, I really want a mini excavator. So I'm just drawn to it. I thought, well, that color's a little different. I walk down to see what it is. It says Devlon, Devlin. I've never heard of that. So um, my question for you is, is this a new brand? Uh, so it's a new name for an old brand. It used to be called Doosan. Um, it's actually pronounced Develon. They just recently changed their name this year. Uh, they were bought by Hyundai Imperfor. They just had big Doosan equipment. At Doosan, I know that name. That uh, isn't that associated with Bobcat. It used to be. Yeah. It used to be. So the Doosan heavy equipment line got bought out by Hyundai. Oh, That's okay. Right. Yeah. All right, so this do they specialize in mini excavators or do they make a wide range of no, they're making machines? a wide range of machines now. They just came out with some dozers. 
uh, DD100 and DD130. They've both been very popular. They are coming out with a skid steer within hopefully the next quarter of next year, first quarter of next year. And then, uh, yeah, they're coming out with a bunch of mini excavators. All right, so big question that anybody has when they're saying, I'm going to spend a lot of money on this machine is, you know, a, what about dealer networks and support and service? So you guys, what's the name of your dealership and what kind of area do you serve? So we're from uh, Central Power Systems. Uh, we have locations in Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Wichita, uh, Kansas City, Liberty, Austin, and we're just growing. So you have pretty luck, good luck getting parts for one of we these do. when they break down. Yeah. So we have they. Uh, if we don't have them in store, uh, Debellon has a big warehouse and in uh, Georgia, and it's pretty easy to get parts next day, if not during that week. Okay, so this is about the size of machine I'd like to have. Sure. So, so what's the price range we're looking at for this? This one, depending on what you're wanting, it could cost you around forty-five to $55,000. Okay, that seems pretty reasonable for a four-ton. This is four-ton, four right? Yes, sir. Okay, and um, can you get this machine with an angled blade on the front? Uh, the 35 does not have an angled blade right now. There's a DX4, uh, DX42 that's coming out, and they do have angled blades. They're, they're a little bit bigger. They're about a five-ton All right. I noticed the seat actually says Doosan on it. Yeah. So. Okay, hey, I appreciate you yeah. taking the time to talk. Not a problem. Me. All right, so now we're at the Coyote dealership. And uh, what's the name of your dealership? Broken Arrow Lawn and Garden. All right. That's here in the Tulsa area. So this tractor right here, 37.5 for a 45 horsepower no. cab tractor, that is a competitive price for sure. So is this a hydrostat only? Or on this particular version, it is offered only in a hydrostat. They do, the DK series tractor is offered in a shuttle shift. I have a hard time understanding model numbers from Coyote. So I was hoping maybe you could help me out with that. So that first number loosely represents horsepower, but what do the letters mean in front of it? What is that other number? Yeah, so the, the DK of this model uh, is kind of their biggest compact tractor, but their series starts with the CS, then we're going to go to CX. Those are only 25 horsepower options. Then we're going to go to the CK, which will be 25, 35, and 40. And then we'll go to the DK, which is... I think 42, 45, 40, or 53, and 60. And then we're going to go with NS, NX, RX, and then their new HX. For, but for my demographics with my selling, this is this this tractor here with maybe a 60 horse, this is what they will offer. So the, the first two letters represent a series number. That's going to tell you the size of the tractor and whether it's premium or more of an economy tractor. Yeah, the, the size and then kind of their prefixes on the end of their number are going to, like SE is pretty widely used in the Coyote world, and that's going to be kind of their Cadillac version of that offering. It's got all the bells and whistles on it. So I've narrowed it down that I want a cab tractor this size. Why would I go with Coyote? Well, I think, you know, if you're in love with one of the, the top two brands in, in the United States, which is obviously John Deere and Kubota, um, you may only choose them no matter what, but if you're wanting a solid offering and, and don't want to pay that extra cost to, to be in that status quo of their ownership, I think Coyote is going to have the best offering and, and best tractor for your money that will perform right with those other top brands. One thing I've noticed is I publish a lot of tractor videos, so I get a lot of feedback from guys who have tractors. And in 1,200 videos, I don't think I've ever had a comment from someone who said they bought a Coyote and they weren't happy with it. Yeah, I mean, we've sold them for five years and we sell probably 40 to 50 a year. And I've never had somebody, you know, regret their sale uh, or their purchase. So uh, another, brand. another thing Coyote seems to hang their hat on is a high lift capacity on their machines. What is the lift capacity on this specific machine on the loader and on the three point? This model, uh, the loader is rated to lift up to 2,500 pounds. And then the rear end, I believe, is around 2,700 pounds. So, I mean, and that's what you get with Caddy. You're going to get a lot of tractor. You know, if you go look at John Deere and Kubota, you're going to spend 10 to 20% more to get these same specifics. And you're going to have the same, you know, track that does the same thing for a lot less money. All right. Hey, well, I appreciate you taking time to talk. Thank to you.
couple things that stand out to me, the step and the floor of the cab seem really low for the size of this tractor. The fuel fill is protected, but it's down low, which is convenient for filling. One thing I don't see much on compacts like you do on ag tractors is this support right here. I thought that that was a backhoe subframe, but it's not. This is the loader mount, and it goes all the way back to under the axles. So where people sometimes with John Deere, there's been a lot in my model range with John Deere tractors, but there's been a lot of breakage on these bolts here. And you're less likely to have that breakage when your, your support is tied in all the way back under the axle. Got a nice roomy cab for a tractor this size. All the controls are well laid out. Integrated third function buttons. Free range transmission. Looks like a nice machine. So this is the exact tree saw that I was using yesterday from Vale Products. They're actually out of Kansas, and you can see it here running some of the same kind of stuff we were doing. Then right here they've got a skid steer brush cutter that does 10 inch trees. Can you imagine cutting a 10 inch tree with a brush cutter like that? Pretty wild. I mean, I've ran mulchers, I know it's out there, but that's a huge tree. And then this one does six inch trees mounted on a mini excavator. That's not that big of an excavator. Local company to me. And these are manufactured about an hour from me. So earlier when I was showing the badass workbenches, this is the company that makes the drawers for them. Drawers with the 450 pound weight capacity. They've got one here built into a truck, and they make their own workbenches. So if you're interested in, like, the most sturdy toolbox workbench you've ever seen, Swivel Storage Solutions. Hey, so I'm just walking along, and I see a Machio round baler. And you guys know I've been wanting to get into baling my own hay. I bought the old square baler. And all of that is based on the idea that me believing that I couldn't make any kind of a bale other than square bales or the miniature tiny little round bales. But I ran into Phil from Small Farm Innovations and he's a Moschio dealer. And he was explaining to me that I might have some other options. Moschio, you know, you can, uh, it's a fixed chambered baler so it always requires less horsepower. Yeah. But if you're wanting to bale your own hay, we always specialized in compact forage equipment that requires, the tractor requires 18 horsepower to operate, you know, a nice baler where you could bale 100 to 200 bales an hour and have your own hay. So there's a lot of people out there always waiting for somebody to come and bale their hay for them. Well, that person never shows up. This gives them the opportunity to be completely independent. They have control of their quality. They have control of their time when they get their own hay but. Now, Moschio is Italian-made. We offer stuff from Japan, which is a high-end product. Well, we know we don't have to follow it out to the field. It's like a, a Rolls-Royce versus a Mazda, you know, nothing against Mazda. But anyway, we offer the high-end products and easy to operate, easy to get to know, easy to get parts with. So options for me on my 38 horse, we've got the actual mini round bales, but then you were kind of saying that there was a bigger, I could do a little bit bigger bale. Yeah, we have a three by three that requires actually 25 horsepower, has its own hydraulic system. It's a net wrap in it. You can bale about 30 bales an hour with it. It's a remarkable machine. It's heavy duty. It has big change on it. It's 100% Japanese made. The company's been in business over 100 years. And what's the name of that company? Takakita. Takakita. I wouldn't mind showing one of those Takakita round balers. I'd really like to become more self-sufficient like that, and that'd be a great first step to bale my own hay. It's nice to know I've got some other options. All right, so we're over at the Kubota booth, and I'm checking out this mini skid steer. You guys know I've recently got a mini skid steer on the property, and just wondering how this one compares 
So the controls definitely feel different. This is like a twist handle. Yeah, so, so it's like a T, a T handle there. So you only got to use one handle uh, to be able to drive it, steer it, and do whatnot. And then you have the other one. So if you're doing loader work or dirt work or back dragging, you've got both hands to be able to punch in the machine. So this is it's really the same in that you're go, doing all your travel with one, but it's a little, maybe a little more intuitive with that twisting motion. Yeah, you can really, like, if you got your gloves on, you can use the palm of your hand a lot easier than just having two different handles on there. And then your other one is your, your boom control. Yep. It's got a couple buttons on it. You've got auxiliary functions built right into it. Yeah, so you got 15 gallons per minute up on the front. So anything with auxiliary flow to the front, those are the two buttons that are on the back side. And then the one on the side there is your float. So whenever you're floating your bucket, back grabbing gravel or whatnot. Awesome. Well, I do like those buttons. That's a nice control setup for that. Um, do you know about how much weight this will lift? Yeah, it'll lift 1,000 pounds all the way to the top. The benefit to it is it's only got 36 inch wide track. Now, I found that mine will act, it says it'll lift 1,000, but I actually picked up 1,500 all the way up, and then the thing tipped over with me on it. It's kind of a funny little video. <laughs> I, what I, and the point is that these booms will actually have more power, but it's you can, about the it's about the tipping the counterbalance. It's a safe operating weight of a thousand, not what it's capable of. Exactly. Yeah, you could lift more than a thousand, but it's not recommended to be safe. Don't ever do what I did, guys. <laughs> I'm sure you all saw that one. What's a machine like this cost? Uh, so this one right here is right at uh, forty grand, depending on what option. Like it's things that need to change. The mine's made by Bombalite, but it's got a Kubota engine in it. Yeah, you know, you know Kubota is the number one diesel uh, selling engine in the world under hundred horsepower. That's not on a boat. Okay, so now we've found a Kubota tractor in the same general size and horsepower range I've been looking at. This is a fifty-four horse. And I'm not going to try to narrate because I don't know a lot about this machine, but I'll let you kind of tell us a little bit about it. Um, I guess first, understanding the model numbers, the MX. Yeah. Are there different models in this size? Yeah, so basically the MX is kind of the family of the tractor, right? 54 is the 54 horsepower, and then the last two numbers are the generation. So this one here is the MX 5400. You can get in 60 horse or 54 horse. You can get in a hydrostat gear drive, cab, or no cab. All right. And this exact model, is this only hydrostat or can it be? No, you can get you can get gear drive or hydrostat. And the reason they built this is it's kind of in between our M-series tractor, where it's the full utility, something that, you know, you're using a bat wing on or, you know, putting out hay bales and a stacking hay bales, that type of thing. Um, and the L series, which is more, you know, around your house type of deal. This is in between, right? Still small enough where you can get in between things, but it's got that extra horsepower where you can pull that little bit extra, uh, you know, uh, brush hog and whatnot. Okay. And so I've talked to like six different dealerships. They all told me they make a great tractor. If I'm ready to buy one today, this size, why would I go with Kubota? One, Kubota from top to bottom, right? So they don't outsource anything. They build it. Right. So the benefit to that is if you plan on keeping a tractor for a long time, which most people do, uh, you can always find parts for this. You're never going to get bought out. There's not going to change suppliers. You can get the parts. Right. If we don't have it in store, we can order it, get it from the warehouse in a very timely manner, as opposed to going with some other brands that are out there. They're actually, you know, they're built by somebody, but painted a different color or, you know, they get it from this supplier this year. The next year they get it from a different supplier that causes issue with supply chains. You're not going to have that with this machine. I also think I've never owned a Kubota. I've got to run a couple. Yeah. And uh, things like fit and finish, they're pretty tight, like yeah. details. Well, do really know, that's well. Kubota's history. That under 50 horsepower, this is what they come to the U.S. market with, right? This is the machine that made their bread and butter, so they take pride and joy in this size tractor. You're going to find things like the battery is very easily to get to, right, where you can jump it if you need to. The control valve on the loader, you can lift and curl, dump all at the same time, smooth and easy. Just little things like that you'll find. I have heard they're pretty much the best on that, the two yeah. function on the loader. Yeah. So uh, pretty great. So what's it going to cost me? Yeah, so this one, the way this one's set up, this is a gear drive with all four tires. Uh, cab, you're looking at right at 50 grand. And that's getting you 0% for 72 months. If you pay cash, you get a little bit better incentive in doing that. Um, but the 0% for 72 months, that's something that's pretty hard to beat. I tell you what, I, 
feel like I got multiple personalities because I go up to every dealership and I'm like, man, if I could buy a tractor, this would be the one. I mean, that's a sharp looking machine. I sat in it, pushed all the buttons, but uh, I do think they all make a good tractor. And I yeah. appreciate you taking time to show me this one. Absolutely. You need a side by side. The tractor yard's got a a bad boy bandit side by side up here marked pretty darn cheap, way below MSRP. So come on out to the Tulsa Farm Show. I've been talking to Jake from the tractor yard for the last hour, but they sell TYM and LS, and I've done so many videos for those brands already. We're not going to do another one today. You can check out the ones I've already published. That's going to wrap up the show. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.